Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss men's wallets and billfolds and everything you need to know about them so you get the best value for your money. Just like clothes, wallets can have a huge impact on your wardrobe and they should be an extension of your personality. You don't believe me? Take a look at this wallet, it's black compared to the brown wallet with the blue line. Huge difference, right? First, let's talk a bit about wallet history. It was first introduced after paper money became popular in the US in 1690. The first wallet was introduced by the Massachusetts Bay Company. But in the 19th century, every man would have a wallet so he could carry money around with it. The pocket-sized wallet that we know today became popular in the 1950s. Before that, men would wear coat wallets and we discuss those more in detail later. Now, for more about the history of wallets and billfolds, please check out our in-depth guide on the website here. Most wallets in the market today are really cheap and of low quality. Now, if you want to buy a wallet that lasts you for years to come, you have to invest in quality and you have to understand and recognize hallmarks. Now, if you want to get the best value for your money and find a wallet that lasts you for years to come that looks elegant, you need to understand what quality hallmarks to look for and how to recognize them and how to distinguish crap from good quality. The first hallmark is an open pore leather. It all starts with the leather because that's the number one material men's wallets are made out of. You want to look for a leather that is not pigment coated or at least minimally and you want an open pore structure because that enables the leather to develop a patina and over time it will just age better. It also means that it's a first quality leather because it has not been treated or sanded or embossed to look like a first quality leather. When you hold it in your hand it has a wonderful tactile feel and it will just age gracefully and improve over time. 95% of all wallets have cheap leather, so you have to really take a close look at the wallet and see if there's an open pore structure. Sometimes it helps to bend it slightly because if there's a pigment coat on top of it, you can see how it wrinkles in a really weird way. It's difficult to describe the differences in leather quality without being able to touch them and feel them and you'll have to develop that expertise over time. The hard part about wallets is that usually it never tells you whether it's a pigment coated letter or not. Sometimes they say full grain, which would mean that it's untreated, but it's not always the case. We tested different wallet materials and letters over a period of three years, and we've come to realize that a number of them work well, while others don't. For example, alligator or crocodile, a deer skin, or a Box calf leather are the best letters for wallets because they will stand a test of time and always look good. You may get away with cowhide because it ages well. However, lamb and pigskin are not suited for wallets because they age very poorly and show wrinkles after just a few times of wear. Second thing to look at in a wallet is the divider. Sometimes wallets don't even have a divider and if they don't, usually leave them behind because they can be quite practical to put in receipts on one side, bills on the other, or if you're traveling, dollars in one end and another currency in the other. The majority of wallets has a single liner that is made out of a cheap fabric material. It gives a cheap sound and it will wear out very quickly. On the other hand, quality wallets will always feature an all leather liner divider that's made of the same leather as either the lining or the outside shell leather. To cut costs, companies often use a different kind of leather or pleather on the inside, but if you see a wallet that has the same leather on the inside, you know it's quality. Hallmark number three are the edges of wallets. Most wallets have edges that are simply folded once, then cut on the inside and left like that. While this way to sew a wallet is functional, you'll collect dirt around the edge and the edge may fray, both of which make it look old. A much better way to construct the edges is to use a double folded edge. You can see the outer shell is folded and so is the inside liner. Not only does it make for a very strong edge, but it also looks better and it's much more elegant because it doesn't collect dust and it doesn't fray. A folded edge in a wallet requires much more time, is more expensive, but if you find wallets that have that, you know you have a quality eye. An alternative way to finish the edge on a wallet is to edge paint it. 
To do that, you use a fillet hose, which is a small tool that is hot, and you will add wax and paint to seal and finish off the edge so it doesn't fray and wear out easily. While it's a quality method, personally, I much prefer the double fold method, which is also more unique, but more beautiful. Hallmark number five are card slots. Sometimes you'll find wallets that are simply one piece of leather with slits cut in. While it works, this is the easiest and least expensive way to create slots. They're also more likely to rip and won't stand the test of time. On the other hand, if you go with nicely made compartments made of leather that are folded and sewn each individually, you end up with a much stronger wallet and you'll be able to use it for years to come. One thing that's often overlooked is the corners and the edges of a wallet. The pointier they are, the more likely they are to catch something in your pocket and they come out less easily. Therefore, you always want a wallet that has nicely rounded edges so you don't pull any threads in your clothing and you can easily take it in and out of your pocket. It'll also show less wear. Now, while it's not necessarily a hallmark of quality, having little details and contrast stitching usually shows you that somebody put thought into a product and unlike on a black on black wallet, you really see every mistake with a contrast stitch. So if the stitching is neat and accurate, you know it's a quality product. Also, if you have a wallet made of alligator leather, chances are the overall workmanship is much higher because the leather cost is so much higher that it wouldn't be worth it to go with a cheap construction. Now, there are always exceptions to the rule and you have to inspect the wallet. Quality hallmark number nine is not to have any plastic. Most wallets feature some form of plastic, whether it's the liner or some case, usually that ages very prematurely and it just looks cheap. Initials can be very popular on the wallet and while they're not necessarily a quality hallmark, you should look for something that is just blind embossed without gold and silver foil because that will stand the test of time while the foil may come off after a while and then it just looks like an old aging wallet. Now you know the quality hallmarks of a good wallet, let's look at the different types. In European countries, where coins are rather popular, you usually find wallets with a coin purse. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of them because they always make the wallet very big and heavy. If you carry coins, simply put them in the coin pocket of your pants and you will have a much slimmer wallet in your chest, which gives a nice silhouette. The second wallet, and probably the most popular wallet in the marketplace today, is the billfold. It's called that way because the bills that are in there are folded and it usually has about six to eight card slots, sometimes even more, and it folds a single time. It has extra compartments and it has a divider and that's basically all you need in a classic timeless men's wallet. Sometimes men have a tendency to overload their wallets until they get really fat and thick and so there is a current trend to go with minimalist wallets. These are meant to be much thinner and usually you can only put about four to five cards in them and maybe some cash, but otherwise they won't take anymore. Traditionally, men would wear jackets and suits and so they had a coat wallet which was longer and the bills didn't have to be folded. Today, they've fallen out of fashion and only few people have them when they wear jackets or an overcoat. With the popularity of smartphones, you can also now find combinations of smartphone holders with wallets and card slots. While it's convenient to have everything in one place, the problem can be that it simply gets too thick in your pocket. You'll have to decide whether it works for you or not. Instead of using a traditional wallet, people sometimes use old cigarette holders or business card cases because they're big enough to hold credit cards or check cards and your ID as well as some cash. They also work well as travel wallets because they have a frame and they're enclosed. Now, there are tons of other styles of wallet, but those are basically the classic ones. The only other one that I can think of is the one that has a little money clip on the inside and just card slots, but you're more likely to lose your bills that way and therefore don't recommend them. Now, if you wanna figure out what wallets are worth their money and what brands you should look into at various price points, please check out our in-depth guide on our website here. In terms of color, I suggest you start with something like black or brown. However, those are very boring colors and everybody has them. So try to get something with a contrasting inside. If you don't like that, you can also look at 
different colors. Personally, I like burgundy or cordovan or dark chocolate brown. Of course, if you want to be really extrovert, you can go with green or orange or red. Burgundy has the advantage that it goes with a formal wardrobe as well as with a casual wardrobe. Bear in mind that you can have different wallets for different occasions and you don't just have to settle on one. No matter what wallet you have, make sure to only carry the cards you truly use on a regular basis and don't leave all your receipts and everything in there so they get really big and fat because not only is it too big in your chest pocket, which makes it look bad, but it's also heavy and because leather is a natural material, it will stretch and it will wear out and look wobbly and create creases. If you're interested in our quality wallets from Fort Belvedere, please check them out here.